She followed the functionary as he led her through the maze of hallways and corridors, leading yet to more stairs and shapeless spaces. She could sense her countrymen in the shadows around her, but could not see them. And in the mesh of dialects and accents, she felt herself moving ever deeper into the uncouth, dust-written simplicity of the provinces, until at last, she found herself standing in the confined vastness of what looked like the cargo hall. The paraffin fumes mixed with the stench of small-town cooking settled on her skin immediately. She calculated how high the surface of the water stood on the other side of the steel around her, and noticed how the engines were many times more deafening here than up on second class. Yet, the grinding set in tones much lower. Welcome to America, said Emilio Tofolo, his voice pulling her back to a place that had stunned her rather thoughtless and light. If Italy were a soup, Lydia, this would be the grease that is skimmed off the top. This is what America is really about, dear, discarded filth, in the hope it will one day bring forth civilization. I'm part of this, you know, and in a way so are you, she replied ignoring his likening her to filth, that he used the metaphor for greasy soup to do so. She paused and bit her lip, as if she were pulling at something that was heavy and unwilling to give. All I know is that you are no better, Signora. Oh, but I never said I was, Lydia. Out at sea, my money means nothing. I just commented on what I believe we're all a part of, including myself by all means. She looked around her. The Napolitans seemed to have populated one side of the hall. She noticed how they appeared more segregated than the rest, men standing, and the women spread out on blankets and the sawdust strewn about to add something of an organic quality to the steel. Their conversations were more animated than those she had been used to hearing around her hometown. At the same time, again, they seemed to have put something of a wall up around themselves that not only felt exclusive, but uninviting. And somehow, there seemed to be a difference between the two. The children seemed quite shunted by the stagnant air. And without realizing it, the question sprung to her lips, why aren't they out on the deck? That is exactly what I asked myself the first time I saw this. The functionary answered after a moment or two. And I decided that this is probably something to do with the docility that comes from being faced with the unknown. Or something to that effect. It is only a theory, but I'm afraid they remain here for the very simple reason that somebody in a starched uniform has told them to. But they will start to venture out in a few days, he added, once we begin to navigate further into the tropics and the heat and the stench becomes harder to bear even for them. He paused for a second and lifted the back of his tiny hand to wipe the tip of his rather flattened nose. It could be that it is also hard to look at the coast of a country that rejected just today, wouldn't you say? Or a country that has rejected them, if you wish. But what did you mean when you said that not even your money could buy passage on first class? I don't understand. In the dim light, she could see the functionary's face become taut and slightly darker. Do you want the short or the long answer to that question, he said. It was just a question. I don't know. <laughs>